Ultimately, this book is a strong, intense, vicious read for any witch, and it has brought me face to face with resistances and fears that I didn't even know I had. Hey everyone, it's Anya Esma, and I'm going to talk about my journey with witch in this video. The book is by Lisa Lister. It's called Witch Unleashed, Untamed, Unapologetic. It was made available in 2017 and I recently purchased it and finished it. So I wanted to share my thoughts about it with you. First of all, I know a lot of people due to the name and due to the reviews online think that it is a book just for beginners. And I have to tell you, it is not. It's not just for baby witches, even though it is suitable for them too, but it also has an intense core that helps you explore your own witchy path even if you've been on it for a few years. I'm going to talk about the criticism that I have and about the positive things about the book. So stay tuned, like this video if you have the book too or if you want to get it. I want to start out by talking about who this book is for. If it is for you, if it's not for you, if it is for the person you are thinking about gifting it to. Basically, it is for witches who are feminists or feminists who are witches. If you are neither of the two, or if you want to give it to a friend because you want them to get into witchcraft, but they are not a feminist, then no, 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 no. It's for people who are one of the two or both. And it's a great entry into witchy feminism, basically, but it's a very narrow sort of feminism. And, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later when I get to the criticism part about this book. This book is for you if you want to work with the elements, if you want to know the basics of witchcraft, if you believe in the cyclical nature of our human experience, if you want to know the basics about working with the moon phases, about working with crystals, herbs, and how to cast a spell. So it has all of these basics, but it also has some deeper thoughts, especially relating to femininity, relating to the womb, relating to menstrual cycles and feminism that I really appreciated and that brought me face to face with some resistances and some weirdness that I had going on. It's also great for ancestral work, for remembering that you are a witch, remembering things from your childhood, remembering um, things from your ancestors, and kind of dealing with the witchiness of it all, with the witch hunts, which any with anything that relates to being a witch. She also shares some a bit non-traditional stuff. It's not just all herbs, crystals, how to cast a spell. She also includes breathing exercises, exercises for connecting with your womb, and I really appreciated that. And my favorite concept from the whole book is the concept of remembering. So re-membering, because we are dismembered as humans as women especially. And I really like this concept of reintegrating parts of you that have been pushed down either by society or by you yourself because you notice that your parents didn't accept them. All of that tiny, tiny stuff, tiny shadows. She goes into the depths of that. And I, I can really appreciate that because many of us do not remember we do not remember that as close to us as our grandmothers, there was still so much crap going on that kept women under, that kept women silent, that threw them out of their seats of power, and that made them unable to connect with their feminine strengths. And I feel, I very strongly feel that this book has helped me reconnect and remember that, you know. I sort of remembered things about my grandmother that I had kind of not paid attention to and things about my mother. And it just brought me back into this healing loop, if you want to call it that, of ancestral 
remembering and ancestral exploration and being able to remember these things actually helped me heal in a very deep way and I'm not saying that her book is a how-to guide for ancestral healing that is just what I took from it but that is the beauty of it you can take what resonates you can take the exercises that you like in the book and do them or you don't or you come up with something completely different as you read it and that's what happened for me because reading about the witch hunts reading about the terrible terrible things that patriarchy has brought with it has given my own memories more depth and it was painful it was painful to read and i know that some people say her text isn't completely historically accurate or not historically expansive enough but honestly just reading it already did so much to me that it has brought me further on my path of being a witch. What I find absolutely genius is her treatment of feminine archetypes and how you can connect to them. She has the oracle, the sorceress, um, the creatrice, and all of these she suggests ways of how to connect with them. For example, tarot and divination are for the oracle. Then the sorceress is very much focused on alchemy and the creatrix is focused on, um, you know, writing and creating things, content. And I love that she brought all of this together and sort of melted it down into the goddess power, you know. All of these archetypes combined are what we know as goddess. And goddesses embody these different archetypes, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm going all over the place right now, I know. But I just really love how she broke it down. And it deepened my own journey to also read about the different kinds of witches that there are. Because very, very briefly, she um, mentions many, many traditions. You have Gardnerian witches, you have... Um, the Salima, which she mentions very briefly and not quite um, how I connect with it. But you also have Bruja and you have Kitchen Witches, Hedge Witches, Hoodoo. So she goes into a lot of cultures and a lot of cultural aspects of witchcraft that really got me hungry to explore some of them further. And I really like that she incorporated this. While I do not like labeling witches, I still like looking into the history, you know. And if that's something you enjoy, if you enjoy learning about the history of witchcraft, this book is also great for you. So next to all of the great wildness, the womb-connected awesomeness of this book, I do want to mention two things, or actually three things, that bothered me. First of all, she starts off the book with much anger, with a lot of aggression against men, against patriarchy, to kind of set the zone that she moves in. And I can appreciate that, I understand that, but at the same time, I think it alienated me. It would have been easier for me to read if she had started off kind of showing her knowledge, showing her um, prestige, and showing what her opinion is, you know, in a positive way, showing what she believes in, telling us about that. But instead, it was mostly um, a, this storm of anger against patriarchy and against men. And she also specifically excluded from her consideration of this book men, um, even trans women, I think, are sort of excluded here. And it is solely focused on women and also many women um, who do not have a womb might find it very difficult to read this book. So I do feel like her view of femininity, um, or at least of being a female, is sort of limited. And I understand that she says, this is my book, I can write about what I want, and she doesn't need to include the male perspective or the trans perspective, the queer perspective, but it was a little bit harsh in its delivery, at least for my taste. 
and it alienated me first thing in the book when I started reading it. So I feel like it's an unfortunate start because you want to get people on board with you before you start excluding them, you know. And later in the book, she does say, she does say that she does not believe in fighting aggressively, fighting pa patriarchy. She believes that helping each other as women, reconnecting with each other, overcoming the hatred that women have amongst each other, that is the way to overcome this, um, this issue. And of course, educating men is part of it, but not her focus. And I think that she could have made that clearer in the beginning, because then I might have felt a little more at ease reading about her opinions. Like this, I was a little bit like, whoa, okay. I was worried that this book would continue in the same angry tone that it started in. And another thing, I think this is just a personal thing, what bothered me is that sometimes it was trying a little too hard with the whole youth language, you know, she loves using abbreviations like BTW, meaning by the way, and I feel like she sometimes used them too much, you know, it's cool if you use them, if you want to have that sort of colloquial flair to your book, but if you use it in places where you usually wouldn't say by the way, then it's sort of pointless and it, it's just there to give a certain feeling. And I know this won't bother everybody, I know some people enjoy this, but for me it was just a little bit like, oh whoa, you're trying very hard. And I almost feel like maybe an editor went over the book afterwards and was like, oh you could put a BTW or an OMG right there, it'll just loosen up everything, you know. <laughs> But that's just me personally. I know this is a bit nitpicky, but I just didn't vibe with some of the, um, not the use of the language, but the very um, intense and very frequent use of these phrases in places where you wouldn't use them normally. Another really great thing that I want to mention about the book is the layout. I love this book for bibliomancy. If you look at it, you have these nice completely black pages and these sorts of things that just highlight the quotes. It's not hard to read. It's not just a page with blocks and blocks of texts, you know. It sort of has symbols, it has little lists and everything. I can really appreciate how she focuses on the lady landscape. Um, mentions and that whole construct that she herself made up about this. Even if you don't resonate with it, I think it is extremely, extremely inspiring to see how other people think of their witchcraft and it helps me in turn structure and understand my own practices better. If I notice like, oh, she does this differently from me, then I know how I do it. You know, sometimes you just do things and you don't know that this is a very personal way of doing it. You think, oh, everybody does it like that. But that's not true. You have your own way. And learning about the ways that other witches treat these subjects and do their magic, work their magic, helps you identify your core, what you connect with. So overall, if you want to own your witchiness in a more deep way and own your femininity in a more deep way, then this book is perfect for exploring this subject, exploring the hurtful parts of femininity and the difficult parts of it. And maybe even if you're a man and you read this book, you can notice where you have resistances, where you feel like this book kind of tickles a shadow of yours. So I do recommend reading it and claiming the word witch for you with this book. So all in all, I think this book is a good read. You're not going to feel instantly connected with it maybe, but it is educational, it is inspiring, and it made me confront some shadows and some resistances to subjects that I didn't even know I had issues with. You just got to keep an open mind, don't be deterred by the language sometimes, and be aware that the aggression and the anger that very much define her practice are not present everywhere in the book. 
there is always passion, but it is very rarely that it turns into anger or turns into a negative emotion that actually like alienated me. That was just in the beginning of the book. So basically, if you want to connect with your femininity, if you want to learn and explore um, feminism from a magical perspective and from a witchy perspective, and if you do want to connect with the womb, with the moon, all of that is in this book. So it is a high high recommendation from me even if it has its issues and in the beginning I felt like I can't get through this book she this is an angry angry lady I realized no she's not that angry at the core she has an important message and she gets passionate about it and I can appreciate that I can fucking appreciate that because I sometimes get angry when I'm actually just passionate so I hope you enjoyed this let me know your thoughts about this book because I talked to some people about it and it was absolutely wonderful to hear how other people kind of saw it. So let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you feel like you like my content. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.